All right. Uh, good afternoon. It's uh, my pleasure to, to welcome you here. Uh, my name is Matt Mulher, and I'm the president of Newport News Shipbuilding. Today was a fantastic day for us. It was uh, a chance for uh, for Congressman Buck McKeon, uh, the chairman of the uh, Health Armed Services Committee, to come to Newport News. And certainly with him uh, are uh, are two names very or two faces and names very familiar to uh, to Newport News. Uh, I was saying, uh, Congressman Rob Whitman could have uh, given the tour without me. Uh, he's been here so often, and certainly Scott Ridgell has been with us uh, as we uh, as we cut the first deal for Kennedy and other things. So it was a great day. Uh, we spent the day out touring the yard. So we have seen the Gerald R. Ford and walked on the ship and stood on the on the hangar bay of that ship. Uh, we have gone down and seen uh, pieces and parts of Virginia-class submarines being built. And then we had a peer side discussion of, uh, of what was going on and uh, what, a, what a, a refueling overhaul is all about. So uh, a, great, uh, a great opportunity uh, for the shipyard to go uh, show off what we do, uh, talk about the people uh, that, uh, that do this work. And, uh, and uh, so it is with uh, certainly my great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Buck McKeon. Thank you very much, Matt. It's great to be here in Virginia, the state that probably has more people working and doing more for the defense of our nation than any other state. I'm really happy to be here with uh, Rob Whitman and Scott uh, Ridgel, uh, members of the committee, strong members of the committee. And, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot in Washington about uh, cutting and getting our, our spending in order. And people say everything has to be on the table. I want people to understand that defense has been on the table. In fact, the first round of cuts, uh, defense was half of the table. We've cut almost $500 billion already out of defense this year that will be spread over the next 10 years. It's very important that people understand that, that as that goes forward uh, and the effect of it that goes across the nation, is going to mean that uh, it's going to decrease our ability to defend the nation, and it's going to cut a lot of jobs. And, the, and you know, you just have to look back here and see how important our workforce is. And uh, I think we, it's, it's time that maybe we just take a little breath and step back and say, we can't fix this economic uh, problem that we have on the back of our defense. Otherwise, if we're attacked again, who's going to have our back? So, Rob, Scott, happy to be here with you. Thank Matt, thank you. Matt, it's uh, great to be back at uh, Newport News Shipbuilding. And uh, Chairman McKeon, welcome to Hampton Roads. We are really uh, uh, honored and delighted to have you here for you to see firsthand the, the critical work that's being done here to keep our country strong and safe. Uh, it was a, a real privilege to be with Congressman Whitman today and Congressman Forbes as well. And uh, we work together as a team uh, to ensure that uh, this wonderful national asset producing uh, the finest uh, naval vessels in the world uh, continues. And I would uh, just close with this, that the continuity of funding is essential uh, to ensure the efficiency of every taxpayer dollar and uh, I applaud the work of the chairman and my colleagues on the House Armed Services Committee to ensure that uh, the funding is made in a, uh, in a manner that allows uh, Matt and his colleagues to plan appropriately. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much, Chairman McKeon, Scott. It truly is an honor to have the chairman here today so that he gets to see firsthand how important Huntington Ingalls Industries, Newport News Shipbuilding is to this nation. And that's really what it's all about, making sure that we preserve this industrial base so we can continue to build the ships necessary to defend this nation. It's absolutely critical as we face these difficult decisions in Washington to put in perspective the importance of maintaining this industrial base so that we can defend this nation for many years into the future. I know there are tough decisions out there, but those tough decisions require us to understand the critical nature of places like Newport News Shipbuilding. So it was a great opportunity today uh, to meet the men and women who build these ships. Uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us to understand how critical these decisions are going to be uh, to the future of this nation and also to making sure that 
America remains as a strong presence around the world. As somebody said, if America is not strong, then there are potential dangers that pop up around the world. So what happens here today keeps our nation strong. So thanks again, folks. Well, it, it would uh, it would result in a loss of about two hundred thousand uh, military personnel out of end strength. That would be all across the board. Uh, it would result in probably a million and a half jobs lost across the nation. It would mean that we probably would lose the use of two carrier task forces. Uh, we don't know the details of all these cuts yet, but uh, it's important, and I'm glad you asked that question, because it's important that people understand very, very serious cuts. As it stands right now, Chairman, given the climate in Washington, as you described as sort of the worst case, well, that, there are, there what are, he as he described, there right. already is the $500 billion in cuts. What, what can you talk about a little bit about what you think realistically is going to happen with defense, particularly thinking about Hampton Roads? People here wonder how much will things be reduced because there is $500 billion less coming out anyway. Where is that going to, where is that going to affect you? We've already cut almost $500 billion. The Secretary will give us the details on that uh, starting in January. But the Chiefs are all working on what specific cuts will be made. We don't know what those details are yet. But we've made a lot of estimate, and that's how we come to the numbers that I gave. Um, hopefully, the super committee will do their job, and we'll be able to. Uh, we've we've cut almost a billion dollars out of discretionary funding. They're supposed to find another 1.2 billion in uh, mandatory uh, spending savings. If they do that, then we'll be spared the the second five to six hundred billion cuts out of defense, and that makes a huge difference, and I hope they're successful and able to do that. If not, and we move into further cuts in defense, it will be devastating. We will not be able to maintain the same kind of uh, strength around the world that we, that we now have, and uh, we won't be able to maintain the same workforce that we now have, which I, I just, I, I don't expect to see that happening. Members of the committee, uh, Scott, Rob, they're doing a, a fine job of trying to explain this to the rest of the members of Congress and to let them know really uh, how, how important this is that we get this fixed at an appropriate way. If we cut all of, all of the uh, discretionary spending, we would still be running a half trillion dollar a year deficit. And we can't fix this problem that we've built up over decades in, in just one budget cycle. So we, we need to really focus on this. We need to understand also we need to put people back to work, not put them out of work. We need to put people back to work and that and grow our way out of this problem. Chairman, let's assume that super committee is successful in, in you know, getting these cuts accomplished. Even in that scenario, what are the implications here for, for particularly for this shipyard? For uh, you know, There's a lot of talk of cutting a carrier altogether. There's talk of of killing an RC, uh, an overlife, uh, excuse me, a midlife overhaul on, on the George Washington carrier, and there's talk of bumping the Kennedy carrier construction back. What do you see the implications being here for this shipyard? Well, you know, a lot of these cuts are coming. The the Secretary of uh, Defense Gates uh, proposed cuts early this year, late last year, and uh, one was a hundred billion that we would be able to uh, do through efficiencies, and then. The chiefs would be able to keep those savings for other other things that were more important. But then he came up with a, a second $78 billion in cuts. But then the president gave a speech and said we're going to cut $400 billion out of defense. And all of these cuts are coming from that speech. You know, without any look at what the risks are around the world, without any strategy planning, just $400 billion, just just take it. And his response, I believe, was that because it's such a big budget, we can take that and then we can use that money for other social spending programs. I think it's important that we really step back and look at that. Are we going to continue to ask our military to, uh, to continue to do all of the same missions that, that they are tasked with it now, 
with much less. I don't want to see that. Um, my job and the members of the committee, our job, is to see that those who are put in harm's way have everything they need, the training, the equipment, the leadership, to carry out their mission and return home safely. And we should not break faith with those people that have been signing up for 10 long years now of war that we've been engaged in, the longest war we've ever been engaged in as a country. And we should not back off one bit from the things that, that they need to carry out those missions. And that starts with the shipyards, with all of the places that we have that are building the equipment to give them the things that they need. And if you, if you stop or slow down and lose part of the workforce, you don't train these people overnight. We just had an opportunity to go through and see these ships being built. I mean, these are people that have been doing this for a long time. They know what they're doing. And if you, if you lose that ability, it's very hard to replace, and it ends up costing more money. So it, it, the smart thing to do would be to just take a breath and see, is this the right thing? You know, just to give a speech and say, let's cut $400 billion out of defense. I'm not sure that's the smart way to go about this. Given your position and the authority the committee has to control the expenditures or the defense, I, it sounds like you're going to stand in front of that. You're not going to let that happen. You want to see the came. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to make sure I understand. The same number of carriers we have now, are those all things that you're going to, you're going to not let happen if they push for those things to reduce the number of carriers? You know, since World War II, our Navy around the world has kept the sea lanes open. That means that we can have commerce, we can trade, we can have economic uh, viability. As our ships travel around the world carrying our goods and bringing other goods to us, that's very important to the nation's economy. And we don't want to take that for granted. Without that, without that presence that we've had around the world, um, you know, uh, we probably wouldn't have the, the type of lifestyle that we've enjoyed for all these years since World War II, and I don't want to see that end. Do you see, do you see your committee being even more proactive than you've been in terms of proposing some cuts that don't harm readiness? And it's anyone who knows the defense budget, it's you guys who can find that money without cutting, without harming our defense posture, and since giving the super committee a different way to go. I mean, do you see you guys kind of moving forward with that? Well, if we're looking for any way we can cut. I mean, you know, to assume that you can't find some kind of savings out of a budget the size of, of our defense budget, uh, I think is ludicrous. And the taxpayer dollar is sacrosanct. We should, we should watch how every dollar is spent. But when I go home and talk to people uh, and tell them how much has been cut, uh, when they said they want everything on the table, they said, no, that wasn't what we meant. We want to get rid of the waste, and we want to make some, maybe some changes. But, you know, we're, we're past cutting fat. We're getting very close to finishing muscle and getting into the bone. And I do not want to be part of anything to do with hollowing out our military and with wiping out our, uh, our workforce that we so desperately need. Do you ever think you'll get to the point where revenue increases will be on the table if it means avoiding uh, devastating cuts in defense? Well, when you say revenue increases, you know, in Washington, there's a lot of buzzwords. You know, uh, one side says revenue increase, they mean tax increase. Uh, there's other ways to have revenue increase. I think I mentioned if we could put people back to work, the 15 million people that are out of work, you put them back to work, you broaden the tax base, they start paying taxes. That's a huge revenue increase, and that's the way to do it. One more question. Go right ahead. I asked two, you go. Just going back on this carrier issue, what is, I, you know, I know everyone's had a chance to think about this now for a long time because this has been put on the table for a while now. How many security strike groups do you think are required? I mean, is it 11? It's going to drop to 10 here next year and then come back up to 11 in 2015. But is it 11, do you think, going forward? I, I don't want to see it go below that until they can show me that the world is safer. You know, when, when you did your New Year's resolutions this year, you probably didn't think about Egypt and Tunisia and Saudi Arabia and uh, 
uh, some of the other hot spots that have, that have erupted uh, just this year. Uh, we've had five hearings in the last month and a half uh, trying to listen to people, former chiefs of staff, former vice chiefs, uh, outside military experts, former chairman of the committee. We had uh, Duncan Hunter, Ike Skelton, and John Warner from the Senate. And uh, Ike Skelton said in the, third, in, the, in the time he was in Congress, I guess almost 30 years, uh, or maybe over 30, he said we've had 13 conflicts and only one did we plan for. All the others come up, you know, unexpectedly. Ronald Reagan said in his lifetime, uh, we never got into any war because we were strong. When you weaken yourself, you open up possibilities for those who would like to challenge you to take, to take risks and challenge you. And, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to send our people into any fair fights. We want to have the power that puts them in the, in the least uh, uh, harmful situation so that they can return safely. And uh, on our committee, we feel it's our responsibility to make sure the nation understands this, that they understand what's being done. I, I, this has happened so fast. These cuts have happened so fast since the President gave that speech to cut defense uh, by $400 billion that it, I don't think the nation has had time to really see and digest and understand the seriousness of it. Do you think that the fight, I'm sorry, the discussion about defense cuts is a partisan debate? No, no, no. Uh, I met with uh, Secretary Panetta. I uh, met with uh, Adam Smith, the ranking member on the committee. The three of us and all of the members of our committee are strongly uh, saying that we, we have given the defense has been cut enough. The $465 billion that we'll see rolled out next year that hits almost $50 billion a year over the next 10 years is enough. Because, as I said, if we cut all of those, all of those spendings, we're still going to be uh, running a deficit. That's why it's important for the, the super committee to do what is necessary to reform some of these uh, mandatory programs. Because if they don't get fixed, the, the rest doesn't matter.